VMix has the ability to add multiple layers of content to your scene without using overlays, just like these. But sometimes you may need to turn off a layer, or switch the content in a layer to something else, or move the content to another position. This can be tricky to do live, so we have shortcuts dedicated to making the process a bit easier. Welcome, I'm Heath from vMix, and today I'll be showing you how to use shortcuts to control layers in your production, just like the earlier demonstration. Before we go further, you might be asking why use layers when I can use vMix overlay channels for adding content to my scene. Well, yes, we do recommend using overlay channels for content that you want to use temporarily, or want to remain visible when you switch between scenes. But if your content is typically only needed for a specific scene, or you have a large amount of content to add, you can save up using those overlay channels and use layers instead. Most editions of vMix have four overlay channels, but every scene can have 10 layers added very easily. In fact, you can have a lot more than 10 layers with a simple trick that I'll touch on later. For now, let's jump into vMix and set up a layered scene and then set up a few shortcuts to control those layers. Here we are in the vMix interface. If this looks a little bit overwhelming, you can check out some of our introductory videos to get a feel for what vMix does and how it works. I've put some helpful links in the description if this is you. So here you can see that I've already added a few inputs to my production, and now I want to add these inputs as layers to my own camera input. To do this, I click on the settings gear icon on my camera input, and then I'm presented under the layers multi-view tab with 10 potential layers to add inputs to. So from here, I can add the lake video, for example. And that immediately adds the layer directly over the top of my layer. So I can go to edit, and from here, I can zoom that layer down and then move it into a position that I like it. I can then go back to layers and I can add another one, such as my logo. Here I can edit and there we go, I've prepared that already to be in the bottom left. Now back here, you'll remember that I mentioned that you can have more than 10 layers, and the reason for that is you can create a layered input and bring that in as a layer here. This is called nesting layers, and we do talk about it in one of our layer videos, so I'll make sure that I link that in the description. So now we know how to add layers and how to position the layers, now it's time to add a shortcut so that we can perhaps turn one of these layers on and off. So we'll use a device such as one of these devices here, but you could use your keyboard just as easily. So we'll use a MIDI controller to start with. This is the APC Mini. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this button here because it's in the top right to turn on and off my top right layer input. So I'll go to settings. And from here, I will go to Shortcuts. I'll click on Add. I'll find that button. There we go, it's been found by me holding it down. I'll click OK. I'll go to the Function section and I'll search for Layer On Off. There it is there. Layer on off. Now, a little while ago, we made some name changes in vMix. So they're now called layers, but in the past they were called something else. Therefore, we have some legacy function names and we've got our modern names that use layers. So for this one, we've got layer on off, but the legacy name is multi-view overlay. Throughout this demonstration, I'll be using the modern terms and not the legacy names. So I've selected that as the function and now I'll apply it to my camera input and I'll provide an index and the index is the numbered layer from the layer list that you saw before. So this is layer one. So I'm now applying an on off button for layer one. So now when I press this, you'll watch my layer turn off. And when I press it again, you'll watch it turn back on. Easy. As a special note, if you're using this function, keep in mind that you're not actually removing the contents of the layer, you're just changing whether the layer is visible or not. This means two things. One, the content is still using your PC's processing resources, even if the content isn't actually showing on screen. 
And two, if the layer is off and you change the contents in the layer to something different, you just need to remember to turn that layer back on so that you can see the change. So now that we know how to position layers and turn them on and off, it's time to look at how to take any input and put it into any layer position in our scene and then switch that content with another input. An example of this would be a news program where the news anchor has a screen with content that switches from one story to the next story. To do this, we can use the set layer function, also called the set multi view overlay function. I'll now show you a few ways that you can use this function. The first is a simple approach if you only have a few inputs that you might want to switch about, and the latter options are a bit more involved. For this demonstration, I'm going to use an X keys controller. Now I've already put some labels on these two buttons in the top right hand corner because that's where I've positioned my layer. So let's set up the B's button first. So I go to settings, I go to shortcuts again, add again, find, hold down the B's button, OK while holding, I go to function, I search for set layer, there it is there, I apply it to the camera input, and then I put in the index and the input. The index is the layer number, and the input is the input that we want to replace that layer. So that is input 5, which is B's. OK, we click OK. And from here, when I press the B's button, we should see this layer switch. And there we go. And I'll just quickly set up a second shortcut to return it. to the lake. So I'll hold down the lake button, click OK, go to the function, click on set layer, there it is, apply it to the camera. It's still layer one, but it's input four, that's the lake input. OK, and OK. So now we can switch between the lake and back to the bees. Now this next method is a more complex method and uses a dynamic shortcut function called set dynamic input. If you want to know more about dynamic shortcuts, you'll find a link in the description to one of our videos that goes through this topic in detail. But for now, all you need to know is that set dynamic input specifies the input number of your choosing. You can then use the set layer function we used before to select the layer that you would like that input number to be positioned in. This means pressing two buttons, one to set the input and one to set the position. This is a traditional switching approach and offers a lot of flexibility, but also requires more button presses. For this next demonstration, we're going to use the X keys again, but this time you'll see that I've changed the labels on the buttons to reflect inputs along the bottom and then various locations for those inputs to go along the top. Now, before we set up any shortcuts, we need to go into the settings and position these layers to reflect these buttons. And to do that, rather than going to edit like before, we have some templates that we provide in vMix that speed the process up. So if I scroll to the bottom, I can select this layout right here by clicking on it. And now each of the layers, one through nine, are positioned in these quadrants. I'll show that by putting something into input six, which is the middle right. Let's put the lake there. And there we go. So I'll turn that off now. And now it's time to set up the shortcuts. So now from here, we can go up to settings, shortcuts again, and we can create some new shortcuts. We'll add the dynamic shortcuts first that will reference these various inputs. So I'll click on find and I'll start with the logo. I'm holding the logo key down and clicking OK. Going here, typing in dynamic. And from here, I can select set dynamic input one. And for this, I'm setting the input to be the logo input, which happens to be input six. OK. Now for the next one, we will find 
the like button. Okay. Yet again, dynamic. Set dynamic input one. And for that, the like is input four. Okay. And finally, find the bees. Okay. Set dynamic. Input one. And the bees are input five. Okay. So now we have our dynamic shortcuts. And now it's time to add some positions. So we'll go to add again. We'll find. And let's start with position top right. I'll hold that down. Click OK. And for this, we use set layer again, just like we did before. But this time, our index will be position three, because that's the top right of that three by three box that I showed you before. And our input will be dynamic one. There we go. And I'll click OK. And so now, if I click OK, if I press the top right button, it will fire whichever of these buttons I've pressed most recently because that will be the dynamic input set. So let's start with the lake. I'll press lake and now I'll press the top right. And there we go. We've brought the lake into the top right of my scene. And you could do the same with any of these buttons by setting them up. And that way, when you fire a button like the logo, you can send it to any of the positions. But we've only set up this one, so I'll click it now. There we go, we've switched to vMix. Now, imagine if we had 20 inputs instead of just these three and wanted to use them with all nine different layer positions. You might start to realize that to have the full flexibility of adding any input to any of the nine layer positions will require a lot of buttons and many devices just don't have enough. So as a final option for those using an Elgato Stream Deck, you might find this alternative a good middle ground between the first method and the second. The reason it's only relevant to the Stream Deck is because this device has a built-in folder feature that we can take advantage of. The Stream Deck requires a vMix plugin to work with vMix. Let me show you how to set that up first. So if we open up the Stream Deck software, from here, we need to go to the store by clicking on this, and then from there, typing in vMix. From here, we can install the plugin. Now, once that's installed, that gives us access to shortcut buttons that we can apply to our keys. You can see that this happens live. These can be used straight away in vMix, but we're going to set up shortcuts inside folders, and I'll show you why soon. So by right-clicking on a button, we can create a folder. Here, we can change what the folder looks like. And so that means that we can select something like a picture in picture for a top left. Now, if we go into that folder, add some shortcuts and give them some labels, logo, lake, and bees. Now we can use this button and access these buttons as inputs in our vMix production. So I'll go back and I'll make a copy of this and I'll paste it right here. And from here, we'll change that icon to be the top right. So now I've got a top left shortcut folder and a top right shortcut folder. So we can close this down now because we now have buttons ready to set shortcuts up on. So we'll go to settings, go to shortcuts, we'll click on add, and we'll find a button. So firstly, we need to go into the folder, and from here, let's click on logo. Okay. So that's now applied the logo button to that shortcut. We'll set the function to be set layer. 
like we've used in the past. Apply that to the camera input and because its index is the top left, that's item number one and the input for the logo is input six. Okay. And we'll add one more. Add, find. We'll hold down the lake. Okay. Apply set layer to the camera input. Position one, input number four is the lake. Okay. So now we have two buttons set up. So if I take this back, now if I wanted to send one of those two inputs into the top left position, I would click on the top left position folder. And then from there, I would select logo, for example. And there we go. It's popped up in the top left. Or we could switch that to the lake and back to the logo. The last shortcut that I'll mention is the move layer function, also called the move multi view overlay function. Move layer will take all of the layer information, including the position of the layer and the input associated with the layer and swap it with another layer. This means that the inputs on screen will not move their positions, but their display order will swap. So what was in the foreground before will now be in the background. If you have two layers in the same position, this will mean that one will be hidden behind the other, and this function will swap them, revealing the other. This is a function that is rarely needed on the fly, so I won't demonstrate setting up the shortcut, but with your understanding of set layer, I think you'll work out how to use it if you find a need for it. Just be sure to use it carefully because it will overwrite your position settings for layers, and this is especially important for virtual sets. Now, at this moment, some of you might be going, wait, did he just say virtual sets? Yep, I sure did. You may not realize this, but our virtual sets operate just like layered inputs. So that means all of the shortcuts we've used in this tutorial can be used on virtual sets too. But that doesn't mean they all should be. See, the layers of virtual sets have a very specific display order and often have special position parameters that can't be moved. Because of this, we don't recommend using move layer on virtual sets, but set layer is a very useful shortcut for them. Let me quickly show you an example before we finish up. So I'm going to go to the add input section and I'm going to add a virtual set. I'll select this one and click OK. Now I'll go to setup and I'll show you that here are our various layers and you can see they're numbered one through to 10. I'll put myself into screen one, that's camera. And in screen two, I'll put the lake. There we go. What you'll find is if you go to settings, you can see now that I've got in layer three, my camera, and in layer five, the lake. So I can use the same set layer features to switch layer five to something else, such as the bees. And here you'll see that switch to be the bees input. So it works exactly the same. Righto, they're the main ways that you can control your layers in vMix using shortcuts. If you want to know more about vMix layers or shortcuts or any other vMix related topic, you can visit our website at vMix.com, check out our training videos, help files and knowledge base articles. You can also send us a support request from there. One thing I would ask is that you don't ask support questions in the comments below because it's very hard for us to provide you with good help there. And that's it. I hope this video has been helpful and left you thinking about good ways to use and control layers in your future vMix productions. I'll see you next time.